Welcome! This is going to be a video coming at you from the Maryland Archaeological Conservation Laboratory at Jefferson Patterson Parker Museum and our topic is going to be when bags go bad, um, as they do. I'm Sarah Rivers Cofield. I am the curator of federal collections at the Maryland Archaeological Conservation Laboratory. When you do archaeology, you probably know that we keep track of provenience. We use a lot of bags, bags within bags within bags, because that is how we know which artifacts were found in which unit, which layer, etc. We keep the artifacts that were found together together, um, but we bag different kinds of artifacts in little bags, then group them in bigger bags, then group them in bigger bags, kind of like this. We here at the Mac Lab require the use of a polyethylene bag that is four mil in thickness. And what that means, this is a two mil bag. It's a little bit thinner. This is a four mil bag. It's thicker. It's just the weight of the bag, the thickness of the, of the sheet plastic, essentially. We require four mil because they hold up a little bit better than the two mil bags, but a lot of people use the two mil. We ventilate these bags a little bit so that there's a little bit of airflow. And there are pros and cons to using these polyethylene bags. The reason we use polyethylene is because it's inert. It doesn't contain like acids or something that's gonna harm the artifacts. Um, and so it's supposed to be good for preservation. They're good because they buffer the environment around the artifact. Big fluctuations in temperature and humidity can hurt artifacts that are already vulnerable to deterioration and so the bag provides sort of a buffer to that environment. And they're also great because you can label them with a marker and you can see through them to what's inside. However, there are definitely cons to using plastic bags. Plastics are not forever in archeology. span You don't earn a lot of points for sustainability of plastics. These plastic bags have a lifespan of anywhere from maybe 10 years to 20 years if you're lucky. And then the other big issue that we have with these plastic bags is sourcing them can be difficult. Plastics are made in batches and knowing where they're made and what chemicals are being put into that batch is sort of impossible for collections managers to keep track of. So um, you don't necessarily know if there's any additives or, or anything going into them. And that, that can be a problem. It's hard for us to police that. But as a general rule, the polyethylene bag is still our standard go-to for housing archeological collections. When you are storing your archeological collections in these polyethylene bags, and you know that around the 10 year mark, you might start to see some bag deterioration, um, you wanna keep checking on your bags periodically to make sure that they aren't having any preservation issues. So especially after the 10 year mark, you wanna check, but you wanna check periodically anyway. But at least every two years, I would check the bags to make sure that, that they're not deteriorating. And when you're checking the bags to figure out if they need replacement, I sort of have a three senses approach to this, and it's kind of in order of crisis management. The first sense I use is smell. So when you open a box that's been back in storage and you're checking on the bags, if you are given an overpowering smell like crayons or something like that, that's usually a bad sign. All plastic bags typically have some kind of chemical smell, plasticky smell, and that's fine. But if it's super strong, it can be a warning sign that the plastic is starting to break down. The second sense you use is sight. So two kinds of things to look for if you're just doing a visual inspection of the bags. One is the foggy bag, and I have one here. This is a well-loved collection. It gets accessed a lot, and the more you access the collection, the more beat up the bag gets. That's a great sign. You want people using your collection. However, it's harder on the bag. They get physically beat up. You can't see what's inside there. It's just sort of a warning sign. This bag is actually okay, but because it's kind of foggy and it's been handled a lot at any given time, I wouldn't be at all surprised if I went to open it and the Ziploc just broke in my hand something to just keep an eye on if you know that they're handled a lot. The second thing to look for is color. Here we have a stack of yellow bags, which clearly this had something in the batch of plastic that is causing this chemical reaction. Now we don't know if that reaction is an inert reaction or if it's something that would harm artifacts or not, 
But if you see yellowing bags in your collection, it's another warning sign that you need to keep an eye on that stuff and make sure that those artifacts aren't suffering from being exposed to whatever is making those bags yellow. If they're just yellow, but otherwise the bag seems fine, it's probably not your highest crisis in collections management. Um, now we have to move on to the touching, and this is the real test. On a sort of minor scale, if you have a bag where it's so dirty or so overhandled that the Ziploc won't close anymore, that needs replacement. The bag is fine, but the Ziploc doesn't work, so it's not gonna hold the contents, so you have to replace that bag. Um, the other thing you have to look for when you're handling the bag is splitting. So I have here some examples of bags that I picked up and they look perfectly fine. They're totally intact, but they did this and spilled all the contents out the side. You cannot use that bag anymore. You have to replace it immediately. And those tend to be more physical failures that are a little bit less crisis oriented than the last two categories of bag damage, which are bags that are really brittle. Um, and I have a whole bunch of those here that we can show you. You can see these just kind of fall apart in your hand in very uneven ways. They're super brittle. If you can take the top off your bag like that easily, that's not a good sign. Um, and I have a whole pile of those here from a rehousing project and you can see how they all fall apart. Um, so brittle is something to look for. And then the other thing to look for is sticky bags. If the plasticizer is failing in your plastic bag, it might get sticky, it might get weepy. Um, and if you come away from handling that bag feeling like you have icky residue on your hands that's not just Sharpie marker or dirt, then that is a very bad sign. You don't want your bag to be getting so sticky it sticks to your artifacts. You need to replace those bags immediately. So those are the three senses we use to check on the bags and sort of the sliding scale. If you've got, if it sort of failing the sight and smell test, you're probably gonna wanna gear up and get your supplies. If you have the brittle, the splitting, and the stickiness, you need to replace those bags immediately. So that is it on our when bags go bad video. When bags go bad. For other videos on how to pack those bags in the first place, how to do microenvironments, etc., check in with some of the other videos from the Mac Lab.